Okay, this lesson is for section 4.4, function notation. Um, what we're going to be doing today is working with different functions, um, and instead of using y, we now use f of x, or g of x, or h of x, or s of x, different letters to represent different y variables, because if you see in our first function, or in our first graph here, um, when you have multiple things graphed on the same line, rather than calling each one of them like y and having to, to um, write out the entire function every single time, you can just refer to this function here as h and this function as g, and then we, the reader knows which graph you're looking at. So we use function notation just to make it easier so we don't have a, m a bunch of different y variables all over the place because it's easier to differ differentiate between the lines. Okay, so one of the things I want to make sure that you understand is that f of x... So this is written out as, oops, or said out loud as f of x, okay? Um, f of x is not f times x. This is probably the biggest mistake that people make at first. Um, I know it looks like that, that you're multiplying the two, but that is not what that means. It means f of x, where f of x is equal to y. So we're going to be doing various things with functions. We're going to be finding the sum, the difference, and the product, and quotient, which is pretty simple. So this first objective here is pretty easy. The second objective we're going to get into almost right away, um, and that's evaluating a function for a particular given value. And then um, our third uh, objective today is pr pretty much the hardest, the composition of functions. So this is the one that I want to make sure that you replay the video at certain parts if it doesn't make sense, and then make sure you come into class ready to ask questions or fill out the feedback form. Okay, so I actually changed a couple things about um, problems one through four. So make sure that you, on your note sheet, because I think I made these changes after I already printed out your note sheets, sorry about that. But uh, make sure that you change these to reflect what I have here in one through four. Okay, so um, let's compute h of two. Well, two just means x equals two. So you're finding on the graph of h where x equals two. So you want to evaluate with, with the graph where x is two. So I'm going to go on the blue function because that's labeled as h. And I go to x equals 2, and I scroll up and I find that at x equals 2, h of x equals 4. So h of 2 is equal to 4, which means I have the coordinate. Remember, it's just an x, y pair. And h of x is equal to y. Then I have 2, comma, 4. x, comma, h of x is a coordinate. And it's just 2, comma, 4. Okay, so this is what that notation means. Now g of 2, this time I switch to the graph of g. So I look on the red line. If I go to 2 on uh, the red line, I'm all the way down here at negative 10. So g of 2 equals negative 10, which means that x comma g of x, that coordinate, is equal to 2 comma negative 10. For g of 0 divided by h of 2, you're just going to take each one of these separately. So evaluate g of 0 first. Well, g of 0, if I go down to 0 here, I have 0, negative 6. So it's negative 6 over h of 2. And luckily, we already know what h of 2 is from above. h of 2 is equal to 4. So if we simplified and evaluated this, we get negative 3 halves. Okay? Last but not least, for number 4, um, h of g of negative 3. Now, this looks confusing, but really all that this is saying is use g of negative 3 as the input for h. Okay? So I'm going to find g of negative 3 first. And if I go to g of negative 3... I'm at 0. So this is the same as finding h of 0 now. So this 0 becomes the input. Okay. So h of g of negative 3 is actually h of 0. And at h of 0, I'm just at 0. So h of 0 is equal to 0. So if I wanted to rewrite that, h of g of negative 3 is equal to 0. And I can also rewrite that as h of 0 is equal to 0 because these two equations here are actually equivalent. All right, now, without a graph, so here we actually could find, you know, the, this particular points that were on the graph. Without a graph, all you actually want to do is substitute that value in for x. So in the first example here, if f of x is equal to negative x cubed plus 2x squared, and I want to evaluate f of 2, I simply plug in 2 for the x's that appear inside that function. So f of 2 is equal to negative 2 cubed, the opposite of 2 cubed, plus 2 times 2 squared. And if I evaluate this, order of operations tells me to do 2 cubed first. So that's 8, and then take the negative out in front. So I have f of 2 equals negative 8 plus 2 squared first, 4 times 2 is 8. 
And if I simplify this, I end up with f of 2 equals 0. So that means that the point 2, 0 would be on the graph of negative x cubed plus 2x squared. All right, now for g of negative 3, I'll let you guys do this one. And of course, you're going to plug that into uh, the g function, not into f of x. Let's do number 7 together. So make sure you do check this with the key, just to make sure you understand the basic, very basic concept of this. Now for f of negative 1 over g of 1, this time we're going to plug in f of negative 1 into the function. And when I do that, I have the opposite of negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 squared. And I'm going to divide that. Whatever I get for this answer here, I'm going to divide that by g of 1. And g of 1 is negative 6 times 1 minus 2. So if I calculate this, I just wanted to do this with you because I know that people make a lot of mistakes with negatives. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Now, you also have a negative on the outside here, so this is going to be a positive 1. This negative 1 squared is going to be positive 1. And then you're going to multiply that by 2, so you have 1 plus 2 to get you 3. So f of negative 1 is equal to 3. And g of 1, if I simplify here, I have negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And I end up with f of negative 1 over g of 1 is negative 3 eighths. So that means um, that's all that you're doing here is just evaluating the function at that particular uh, number. Okay, now this is objective 1 here, and that's to find the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of different functions. So if you take a look at the notation here, f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. So in our first example here, we're, we're asked to find f plus g of x. I'm simply going to take f of x and add g of x. And since both of these are linear, 2x plus 5 plus x minus 1, I end up with 3x plus 4. So really, I'm just kind of combining like terms here. So f plus g of x is equal to 3x plus 4. I'm going to let you guys actually complete the rest of these because we're simply um, following these rules here. And I think you should be able to check with the key just to decide you know, if you understand those, those basic rules. OK, now the composition of a function is probably our most difficult um, part of this lesson. So in the composition of a function, what you do is you use the output from one function as the input for the other. So you're going to see um, it written here. Notice that this is not a multiplication sign. It's an open circle. And what that means is f of g of x. And you're most commonly going to see it written like this. Probably in all your worksheets, it'll be written like this. But they are equivalent to each other. And this just means f of g of x. Okay. It's very similar to what you saw in that first problem, um, or the first set of problems when we found f of g of, I think it was like negative 3 or something. Now, on the reverse of that, if you have g on the outside, g of f of x, and that's how you would say this, is now using f as, your, as the input for g. Okay. So let's do a couple problems, and hopefully this is going to make sense, and I know this is a lot of weird notation for you, but um, the more you do it, the more you practice it, the, more, the easier it's going to become. Okay. So um, here I've got uh, two functions defined for me. f of x is 3x squared, and g of x is 2x minus 1. So in the very first example, f with this open circle g of 3, this is f of g of x. Okay. So I'm finding f of g of 3. And this is similar to what we did in the, in the graph picture. All I'm using is g of 3 as my input for f. So I first need to calculate what is g of 3. Well, g of 3 is 2 times 3 minus 1. So I get 5. Now I'm going to plug in 5 in for f. So after I plugged it into g, I use that result in, in the function f. Okay. So f of 5 is equal to 3 times 5 squared. This is 3 times 25 to give me 75. So f of g of 3 is equal to 75. Now I'd like you guys to try 13 and 14. Notice that this is f of f of 3. Okay? So try those two on your own. Now I am going to do 15 and 16, both of them, because these are pretty tough. This is the composition of two functions when you just have an x here. You don't have a number. Okay? The number ones are pretty easy because you're just substituting in a value. Now this notation is f of g of x, okay? And over here I have g of f of x. Well, what I want to do is use g of x as the input for f. So the entire function 
g of x, and remember g of x is 2x minus 1. This entire function is the input now for f. Okay, so this is where it gets a little weird for students. I'm going to rewrite just f of x first. Okay, so f of x is 3x squared, right? These are equivalent to each other. f of x is 3x squared. Well, now instead of plugging in x here, I want to take that and plug in g of x. Okay, that's what is supposed to be inputted in for x. So I'm actually going to take in for this x and substitute this entire function, g of x. So this is equivalent to 3 times. 2x minus 1 squared. So notice I'm using my g of x as the input for x. All right. And if I simplify this, I'm going to use you know rules of algebra. I need to FOIL this first. So I have 3 times 4x squared minus 4x plus 2. Now I used a shortcut for FOILing this. I don't know if you know the shortcut yet. We will be talking about that very soon. But just do this longhand. And this is um, what I get, and I'm going to multiply out the 3 now. So 12x squared minus 12x plus 6. Okay, this is f of g of x. Now when we compute g of f of x, this time we take our function g, and g is 2x minus 1. Okay, this is g. Now instead of having x as our input, that x should actually be f of x. So we need to take the entire function of f of x and plug that in for x here. Remember, f of x is equal to 3x squared. So I'm putting that in and substituting that in for the x here. So I have 2 times 3x squared minus 1. 2 times 3x squared minus 1 ends up giving me 6x squared minus 1. So g of f of x is equal to 6x squared minus 1. Notice how different these two actually are from one another, okay? All right, in problem 17 and 18, I'm just going to redo the same thing that we just did. I'm practicing it another time, this time giving you two different functions, okay? So g of f of x, this first problem here, says let's take g, which is x squared minus 3x plus 1, and anywhere we see an x, I'm going to use f of x as the input for that. So I'm replacing here and here with this function, x minus 1. So now I have x minus 1 squared minus 3 times x minus 1 plus 1. So g of f of x is now going to be a little bit longer. I need to just work on um, you know, simplifying this whole thing. So this is equal to, after I FOIL, x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to distribute here, negative 3x plus 3 plus 1. And I collect my like term, so I have x squared minus 5x, and then 1 plus 3 plus 1 gives me 5. So g of f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 5. In the next question, f of g of x, this time it's reversed. This time I take my function f, which is just x minus 1. And I'm going to substitute g of x, okay, this whole thing, g of x, in for x. So g of x, which is x squared minus 3x plus 1, this whole function gets substituted in here. So f of g of x is now equal to, I'm just going to rewrite the x, remember, as x squared minus 3x plus 1. And then I have the rest of the function here, minus 1. Now if I simplify here, those ones cancel out, and I'm left with just x squared minus 3x. So f of g of x is equal to x squared minus 3x. So what I would do is definitely um, replay some of these parts if it's confusing. I know I'm, I talk through this a little fast for some students who can pick it up really quick. For others, I do want you to re, you know replay something and practice it on your own, um, just so you get it down really well. And then there's these u-try problems. There's not very many of them. But um, it does give you good practice, so please complete all of these questions here and check with the key just to make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, down here on number four, um, I'm going to show all the, uh, the solutions for these because this is, I think, the hardest part. Everything else is pretty much straightforward to the first parts of the, the, the uh, notes. So you guys can pause, 
and then check with the key and then um, if you get stuck on four I'm going to go through this right now. Okay on number four f of g of x and um, uh, I'm sorry you're finding f of g of x when you're given the two functions already so let's begin. So f of g of x says take f which is 2x squared minus 3 and we're going to use g of x as the input for x. So anywhere we see an x in our function, we're going to replace it now with negative 6x plus 2, because that's what g of x equals, okay? So I have 2 times negative 6x plus 2 squared, and then to finish off that function, minus 3. So let me erase there. Now I'm going to FOIL, so I have 2 times 36x squared minus 24x um, plus 4, and then minus 3. Now after I distribute, I have 72x squared minus 48x plus 8 minus 3, and I end up with f of g of x equaling 72x squared minus 48x plus 5. Now um, I just want to reiterate, I just used a shortcut to find that. Um, since some of you might know it from Algebra 1, you might remember it from Algebra 1. If you don't know it, just make sure that you're, you're foiling out the whole thing and still getting this middle term to be negative 24. Okay? All right, in part B here, we're reversing that, and we're finding g of f of x. So g of f of x says we're going to take g of x, which is negative 6x plus 2, and wherever we see this x, we're going to replace it now with f of x. That's our new input now. So f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3. So I'm going to copy down everything else except for the x is now going to switch to 2x squared minus 3. Okay, so I keep everything about this function the same except for the x is now uh, 2x squared minus 3. So this after I distribute is negative 12x squared plus 18 plus 2. So a, uh, g of f of x is equal to negative 12x squared plus 20. Alright, f of f of x says I'm going to take f of x, which is 2x squared minus 3, and I'm going to substitute in for this x, f of x. So I use it again as its input. So now I have 2 times 2x squared minus 3 minus 3. Oops, I forgot the squared part. So this is f of x substituted in for x here. Okay. And now after I uh, FOIL here, I get 2 times 4x to the 4th power um, minus 12x squared plus 9 and minus 3. And I'm going to distribute. And my final um, function here, f of f of x, is equal to 8x to the 4th minus 24x squared plus 15. The very last problem here, g of f of 1, this is actually easier to do because I don't have to input an entire function. Remember, you're just plugging in f of 1, so find f of 1 first. If I plug 1 in to f, I have 2 times 1 squared minus 3. So that's 1 times 2 minus 3, which gives me negative 1. And then I take g and I substitute in negative 1, and I get uh, negative 6 times negative 1 plus 2 which is 6 plus 2, and that's 8. So g of f of 1 is equal to 8. Okay? All right, that's the end of the lesson. Um, please, 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 please try the U-Try problems, as well as go back and um, review the composition g of f of x, or g, or sorry, f of g of x. Review how to do this when you're given two functions and you're not given a number to input in for the x. Okay? That's the end. Yay! Bye!